Welcome back everybody. Uh, my name is NG. Um, this is my channel. Alright, so we've got another issue again with the E30. Um, so I lent it to a friend, which was a mistake, right? Obviously. Aww. But, um, yeah, anyway, he had a brake leak. Um, you could feel the pedal got soft and, you know, he parked it at his work. And uh, when he came back to leave it, you know, there was a little puddle on the bottom. So what we figured out was there is a... Um, so what we figured out was that there is a leak coming from in between this tank here and the body. So if you look in that little cross break, you can actually see the wetness all over here. So these lines that go to it and there's like a joint um, a junction. So all these brake lines, this brake line going in there. There's a leak between that and the tank right around here. If you look closely, you can see the wrinkled paint that's um, because the brake fluid has gotten in contact with the paint off the tank and it's leaking pretty much right where that tank starts. So it would have been great. All we had to do was drop the subframe to get to these lines here, back here. But now because it has, the actual leak is actually underneath, so you can see all these rusty but it's actually underneath the tank itself. And this is a two-sided tank, if you couldn't tell. All right, so here we go, 22 mil. I did it already on that side, as you can see. There you go. Okay, so I got that diff bolt off. Everything's kind of loose, you could tell, because Shocks are starting to come apart. Alright, everything is kind of squaring away. But you could tell that the mount bolt is still not coming loose, as you can all see. So I'm going to keep just dragging it down slowly. I got this long pry bar here. We've gone down. Prying it lower and lower. I think that's the bottom of that. It's out of the bracket though, over there. You can see it's off the bracket, which is good. I've also got to get the diff, not the diff, but the uh, oops. Also got to get the drive shaft off, the bolts and all that, but it's going to be easier once we start doing that kind of work there, so. Going to keep at it. We see more and more of those faulty brake lines. It's, you can see how rotten they are. That stainless steel stuff just isn't right. So I'm going to be replacing it with some copper. Boom. So I put the car in neutral. I got to where I can get the fourth uh, bolt or nut off. And then now when you get it in position, so like let's say you want it, you know, kind of like in the middle, right? Because now I can move it freely. But you want to be able to get it off, right? So what you have to do is put it back in park. So then now it's stationary where it is. Then you're just fighting basically that park gear uh, holding it for you. You know what I mean? So just make it easy for yourself. So put it back now. Boom! All right, so skipped ahead a little bit here. Um, it was, the bushings actually was seized on the bolt. All right. So what I did was I used a drill to drill through the rubber around it, kind of weaken it separated from the bushing itself and then used a bit of heat on a blowtorch right there 
and then just kept um, kept drilling and drilling until it all kind of got out and then used a pry bar to pry out the bushing on both sides. All right, so everything's disconnected as much as possible. I had to cut the park brake um, cable off because it was just giving me too much trouble. But that bushing's out. The other bushing is also out on the other side. And on there. And all that's left is to get this jack stand out of the way and pull the whole diff assembly out. Okay, now everything is out. And it's just us, bro. It's just me and my boy. everything out right so we got the fuel tank boom this is the paint has stripped away the brake fluid has contacted it and you can see like where it's coming off but you can see it's supposed to be a stainless steel obviously not true right it's got big issues not big issues but there's this right here where it's right on the seam so we're gonna try and clean it up and do that but we'll do that at a separate day um, we've got the rear subframe assembly, boom, and we're gonna, I've already doused it with uh, oven cleaner, that's the trick of the trade here, don't inhale this stuff by the way, no bueno, anyway we've got the oven cleaner on it, kind of soaked it in a little bit and we're gonna go take it to the car wash in the back of this boy and uh, spray it off, clean it up get it ready to um, to take everything that we need it to take so but yeah let's put it on there diff out and everything I decided to change the fluid out um, and I also got new drain plugs for them significantly shorter than the original ones it's a much bigger one this is the OG one right here all right so guys off camera I got this off right here um, this is the inside of that bushing, the inside, uh, you know, the, the, the core of the bushing itself. You can see the old rubber around it. But so usually with these, even with the videos I've seen on this, where it actually gets these isn't in the barrel of the bushing. It's actually this little top hat that actually kind of, uh, it's kind of like a, a place, like a kind of like a dowel in you know on a cylinder head or something it kind of lines it up with the uh, subframe or with the uh, you know with the chassis itself and that's where it, it corrodes you see if you see inside of the bushing itself there's really not much corrosion even on this I didn't even clean this and you can see where I nicked it with my cutter but what I did was so it was in there like so like literally like this what I did was make a cut all the way to the metal here and another one all the way to the metal here. And then I used some um, some chisels like this size. This is a three quarter, I also used a 
uh, five eighths if size is important to you. Um, but I used that and I basically broke this piece off, right? But make sure you cut to as close to the uh, stud as possible because you want to make sure you're getting the actual um, the metal off. So what I did was I did that right here. And you can kind of guesstimate where the threads start and whatnot, but you could see I already nicked mine. And with the way this goes, it's like I'm even if I cut into the threads, we're never going to use that up to that thread. You can see where the bushing ends, and that's pretty much as much thread as we're going to use. And then once I broke that off, I took a hammer and just beat, just be basically this edge, so it would kind of turn. You know back and forth and eventually it just loosens itself I was actually thinking that it was gonna have this piece still stuck in there like it does on the other side here so that one actually the whole bushing came off and that piece is still stuck up in the dough so um, with the other videos that I've seen on this what they do is actually just drill it out and chisel it out piece by piece which is what I'm gonna have to do as well okay so I've gone a bit ahead of myself a little bit, but what I've done is I used a, um, where did it go now? I used a trusty sawzall. And what I did was I sawed, as you can see there, that little chisel in there. I cut that and then I did one on this side as well. And then I used a chisel and a hammer to kind of just tear into it. So it popped it off, boom. This is the what's left of the old bushing. All right, so it's kind of a bit of a mess here. We got brake fluid all over, but um, we have gotten a new three-way fitting here. Made up new lines that go to new fittings. Um, I believe these are the M10 by 1.0. Uh, bubble flares on each end, butterfly fittings and bubble flares that I've done with a flare tool kit, brand new um, brake lines, rubber lines from Rusty Trusty um, Project Car Site Rock Auto. Um, right now I've gotten the brake fluid going because I wanted to test these leaks or these fittings for leaks. And I don't seem to see any at the moment, which is a good sign. This is actually coming from these two uh, ends here, the open ends, which is a good sign. So, um, and I've gotten, I've spliced here and here so as to make, uh, you know, I, I should have probably just gone on and done a, um, a full line here, but this hot line was kind of hard to fit and form. But it works out. It looks like it's working out, so I'm going to continue on. Um, right now I'm cleaning the shop a little bit, so it's going to be a while before I start putting things to back together, but progress is being made. Alright, so guys, we have the fuel tank is mounted. All those fresh, nice brake lines. The fuel tank is mounted. Um... The subframe with diff and axles and knuckle and everything is going on now. Control arms. It's it's tough for one person, but we're gonna do what we gotta do. Alright. Alright guys, everything is coming together. As you can see I've done um, new brakes and rotors on that side. And um, basically, I've learned a couple things. So, so for the brakes, I separated the bracket from the actual uh, piston so that I'm able to put in the uh, brake shoes or pads, I mean, brake pads more easily. And they'll just come off on the sliding pins here. So uh, make sure you get more um grease on these before you put them back together but it kind of just slides out all right so i have jumped to the front end of the car and i am going to go ahead and replace the brakes here as well 
um, just because of the so with these the bleeder screws are seized that's why I initially did the um, the rears but you can tell like there's not much left on that pad um, compared especially compared to the new one but that's like as close to done and then the new pads are right about there so um, in comparison this is them in comparison to each other so not I mean pretty much more than half right so um, but also I tried yeah people are gonna say oh why don't you just you know heat it up and take the bleeder off I did that um, I heated it for quite a while actually with a big acetylene torch and all it did was um, uh, get it loose enough to where it broke off halfway down this uh, the threads of this because these bleeders are pretty long if you want to look at the brand new one the, they're pretty long bleeders bleeder uh, screws so um, they kind of just broke halfway then I would have to be drilling into the caliper itself and then get all those shavings into the piston housing and all that and just it just didn't make sense for like 200 bucks I think I got brakes rotors pads so good deal um, in my opinion and uh, I got the I got everything on right now I have used the um, the set screw that goes into the rotor it kind of helps in this situation usually like you know those are only there for assembly right but I keep it in there because this hub is so short that and plus it doesn't have uh, it has lock lug studs and not lug nuts so there's really nothing for it to hold it on there while you're trying to maneuver the caliper on and all that so it's just much easier is what I'm trying to tell you um, but yeah here's the pads here's the other one pads are in and um, yeah pretty much golden and these have springs on them right there that when once the uh, piston or the yeah the caliper itself goes over it it's easier to it is kind of like spring tension on it so we are gonna get these done and then start bleeding All right, so here we are first start in probably half a year now what seems like uh, pretty much the whole summer I didn't I, barely, I think I drove it twice um, but hopefully everything is good. I forgot to plug in the fuel pump at first, so it was just cranking and cranking and cranking. But here we go. Oh my God, and it sounds great. See, our uh, washer fluid is low. It's telling us. Finally, for the first time since basically the beginning of summer, on its own wheels. All right, so I got the car out of the drive or the garage or whatever. It's been quite a long time, uh, you know, from beginning to end of this video. It's probably took about three and a half months, four months. Most of it was just procrastination and, um, you know, had to order this, got this. But a lot of it is like, you know, having to take the subframe down um, and having to take the fuel tank down just to do brake lines. It's kind of a discouraging sort of like uh, project in the horizon. Like you're looking at it, you're like, God, I, I have to, like this is something I have to get done, and um, you know it's winter here in um, I guess fall, middle of fall, end of fall, right now in Minneapolis. So it's just I just wanted to see it run again. Um, here it is in its beauty. It looks so great right now, but it's very very dusty. <laughs> like it's really really dusty. If you want to take a look at it real close camera doesn't show how dirty it really is but 
I love it. If you've been watching this long and haven't uh, subscribed, please subscribe, please like, please comment. Um, tell me what I did wrong, because I definitely did a lot of things wrong. Yeah, put a comment down there. Just tell me what, what you know, what you're thinking. If you've got one of these, if you want to get one of these, um, if you want to see my other cars, check out the other videos um, on the channel. So let's keep going.